So, Mr. D'Souza, Nascimento D'Souza, your yes. story, uh, of course, you said uh, that your roots are in Sioli. Yes. And well, your story starts in, in uh, Tanganyika? No, in, yeah, well, it's, it's Tanzania now, but I was born in Zanzibar. My father emigrated to, uh, he, he, he was, he studied Who migrated in your family? My, my father. That means he was born in the uh, 1890s? 1898. Uh, and then he moved to, uh, after 1890. Yeah, 1898 or 1896, I think, 1896. Because he was he must have been about 16 when he emigrated. Studied where? At, at this, uh, in Arpura. In that, uh, St. Joseph. St. Joseph. Oh, Sacred Heart. St. Joseph. No, no, no. St. That, Joseph. That, uh, Father Leon. Father, Le Le Father Leon. Father School. Right. Yeah. That's where he studied. He did his matriculation and then went to Africa um, during the war. So it was during the war that he was there, and of course then during got, World War One was it a German territory then? No, I, I, it was Zanzibar was not. Okay. You know, Tanganyika was German protectorate, but Zanzibar was a British protectorate. You see, so he was working in Zanzibar as again in the audit department, mm -hmm. and he always he served right through his life in the audit, colonial audit. From there he was. He moved to Nairobi. I was I was to six months when we moved. In 1928. 1928. 1928. So from that, from 1915, I think 19, uh, 14, 15 uh, to 1928, he was in Zanzibar. Moved s several times, probably to Nairobi, Dar es Salaam, right. but basically anchored at Zanzibar. And 28 moved to Nairobi, and was there. Till he re till he retired. Now I did all my schooling in Nairobi, right from from 1935 to 1944 uh, at the Dr. Ribeiro Cohen School. This was the only very famous, uh, very famous school. And uh, when during my time, uh, except for the last Dr. Ribeiro there in your time? Yeah, yeah. his family and our family were very close. Uh, you know, and we maintained contact for many years. His son, uh, Peter, and his uh, daughter was based in Hong Kong. So we were very close. Uh, not only him, and his, his uh, son-in-law also, Manu, Manu Ribeiro, was also very close. It was a close-knit family, you see. Uh, and it was a close-knit community. Community, yeah. So I, the picture you saw there, I'll show you one or two yeah. more pictures. You want to show us now? Yeah, I can show you uh, a picture of the it, with, uh, you see, there was one person who was very... These are amazing, huh? these are priceless in that sense. Yeah, you, I don't know if you know this chap, uh, Oliver, he, he was he was famous. Uh, Oliver what? Uh, uh, Mr. Oliver, we should I call see. him. In the school? Uh, no, no, not Okay, 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 okay. That's my father there. Uh, I see. And what picture of is this of? This what? is of the community. This okay. is where our residential area. I see. And Some he, picnic or something? Or uh, no, regularly or? we used to have uh, little badminton tournaments. Oh, wow. And, uh, and uh, you know, it was basically a get together. Now you are how old here? This is early 30s. Uh, yes. I, I'm, where am I? Here, yeah, actually. Your way? No, I'm, I'm not in this okay. one. This is my, my father. Yeah. You are in the next but one. I'm probably. not in this one here. Yeah. I'm in I'm in this one here. Yeah. How old? This one I must have been about uh, either six. So you're talking that's about 1934. Yeah, this is my brother. What's the building behind? This is this is a Manu a Manu. Um, um, it was his house. I see. Um, Manu Ribeiro. Not Manu Ribeiro. Um, Manu de Cruz? No. Uh, Manu de Cruz. Doctor? Dr. Manu de Cruz. Dr. Manu de father is From Saliga? Uh, from Saliga. This is his father. Oh. So that's his house? Ma Manu is here somewhere. He should be here somewhere. I see. I, I, I think this is... Well, I, that, I think that's Manu. I see. Dr. Manu de Cruz. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> well, it's a small world. And... 
There was a lot. Oh, there was this. This, um, this one was another f uh, well-known one. Uh, there are many of these. Here's another one with uh, Oliver. Thank you. Here I am. I am here in this one. And That's me here. You are about four years old, four yeah. or five, or yeah, I'll be a little older here. I think. I see. I'm, I must be about nearing eight. So we're um, talking about 1935. Then all these others are here. Uh, the Marcials and... Uh, Mervyn Marcial, Mervyn, Mervyn, Mervyn and yeah. brothers. Yeah. The other brothers. Yeah. They are also here, Mervyn is here. I'm trying to see... This is before, before, before the tragedy that killed uh, part of the family uh, during World War II. Yeah, yeah, that's what... Uh, that's, that, that happened in about 43. When they were travelling by steamer and by during steamer. the World War... They yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about that too. Yeah. I'll tell you about that. Oh, sorry. These are priceless. These are amazing in that sense. That's some, a, some cricket team wear? No, this is a, this is a Bricatrix de Bugana. All dressed up in style, huh? Huh? Really? All of them. All of them are there. Mervyn, I say... Bricatrix Nairobi or what? Nairobi. This, you see, I, I thought that was me. My brother insists that it's him. This one here. Yeah. <laughs> um, my father is here. Sometimes. This is... Uh, he was the principal of the Indian High School, okay. uh, Ciprian Lobo. Um, Lobo. You were mentioning uh, J. M. Nazareth and things like that in the other photo. Yes. J. M. Nazareth was the Queen's Council, no? Yeah, later. a very close family friend of from ours. Uh, of ours, yes. Very close. Uh, in fact, he, his sister at one time was in uh, Bombay. Uh, in the school. No, the teaching was principal of the school okay. before. I, I think I, told, I, I didn't get down to my school. See, all the teachers were uh, English or Scottish, Irish. Um, a French teacher was French. And she was a classmate of Hedy Lamar. Hedy Lamar is a very famous actress who was also, uh, I think today they, they recognize her as having sort of been the start of the, in, the internet. I see. Yeah, and I was trying to see if there so was... So you're talking about Dr. Ribeiro High School? That's Dr. Ribeiro High School, yeah. So then you studied there till the age of? Till the age, till 16, till the age of 16. I did senior, senior Cambridge. Yeah. Now, Senior Cambridge I finished in 1944. Yeah. In 19... During the war, during the war. During the war. In 1943, yeah. this, uh, this ship had been sunk. Yeah. And so they, there were BI, that's British India, yeah. who were Steamship. still, they stopped uh, okay. all, all failing. You see, so uh, the year before, that yeah. is in 1943, uh, Wilfred de Souza. Doctor. Yeah, Wilfred oh. and I, we, we were very, our family friends mm -hmm. in Africa. I saw friend. him often, actually. His father and my father were very close friends. So these two, Orlando and Wilfred, yeah. Wilfred, we saw them off at the Nairobi station, and they went by Dow. By Dow? Dow, yeah. It took them three months, all along the coast. Oh my God! By, so we, I was virtually reconciled to doing the same thing. Okay. Coming by Dow, you see. What would the ticket have been like? I, no idea. A few hundred shillings. A few hundred. Oh, it would be very little. Yeah. yeah. The shilling was worth a lot of money. Yeah. At one time it was, you know, even, even in relation to the rupee. Yeah. But the, so I was, I d just finished my senior Cambridge and looking forward to having a little, you know, yeah. enjoy my, my father comes over, uh, we, 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 we had gone to a party at the Catholic Chimkala. We had no car, we were walking home. And he said to me, I think you'll have to pack. We have to leave in a in a couple of days' time. Wow. It came as a shock. Yeah. But he hadn't told me. You see, what that there were several people yeah. there was a, uh, who were also wanting to come to India to study. And they, there was a, uh, the consul, Portuguese consul, was some Gregorio. Gregorio uh, I forget his surname now. A very, very uh, close friend of my father. And uh, 
and they must have been discussing this. And this Portuguese consul yes. worked with the British High Commission or British whatever administration. And they arranged for that a ship. The ship's name was Nyasa. You might remember Nyasa, that. Nyasa, Nyasa. N-Y-A-S-A. Yeah. Sailing from Mozambique yeah. uh, to Goa. Okay. You see. Neutral and ship, neutral ship. Neutral ship. Okay. Yeah. So they decided that they, this ship would touch port in Mombasa okay. to pick up only Portuguese nationals. I see. You see. And take them to Goa. So Portuguese nationals traveling from Mombasa to Goa were permitted. I see. And I managed to get onto that ship. I see. see with the background that we were from Goa. Right. So therefore, claim yeah. Portuguese. Yeah. Um, and that's how I moved. But it was so far yeah. that we didn't have even time. My mother didn't have time. I didn't know where I was going. I they said, don't worry, we're sending a cable. Um, and there was a lady uh, from Saliga, from Harari. Oh. Uh, now, I, for the life of me, I can't remember the surname. Yeah, we do forget. Uh, yeah, no, it's only, but Je her, her daughter, Jenny, or Generosa, was getting married to my uncle, you see? And so they decided to contact them. Yeah. Um, so I stayed, I, they looked after me. I landed in, uh, in Goa, they looked after me there. And then, of course, um, I, I was very happy once I was in Goa, but missing my family, I was yeah. all by myself. Now. You want me to tell you the rest? There's yeah, some yeah, exciting please, bit. Please. All right, it's, it's very... So what happens was that I was fine in Goa. I have a grandmother in, in Balsar. Balsar. My, yeah. my mother's side, Good my job. father's side were in Goa. Yeah. My mother's side had immigrated long ago, long earlier, to, to Bombay. Wow. My grandfather was a bus uh, engine driver. A lot of bones uh, in the railway. In the railway, yeah. In those days. Yes, yeah. So this grandfather, and he had then Balsar. Balsar, Gujarat. Which was Gujarat. Of terminus or something of that sort? Sorry? It was a port, uh, it was a railway terminus? It was a very big okay. um, uh, station, station, transit station, okay. for refueling coal and, and water. Okay. Steam engines had to stop there. Okay. You see, so my grandfather decided because he must have been transferred to Balsar at some stage, he decided to settle there. When he settled there, one of his sons decided to start a business. And the biggest dairy in that area at that time was run by our, owned by us. I see. So we had a very big dairy, flourishing dairy. This is all this Anand area and... Uh, no, no, they had all those come Lincoln, much, yeah. later, yeah. much later, much later. This, this is... I'm talking of yeah, the, yeah. you know, uh, the, uh, in fact, it started slowing down in, in the 40s. Okay. So earlier it was very flourishing. Every, every train took all the supplies of ghee, butter, milk from my, from I our see. farm here. Yes. Wow. That was uh, some, anyway, so I had a grandmother there and I had two grand uncles in Bombay, in yeah. Mayhem. That's my family connections. Yeah. Now, I know I have these uncles in Mayhem, and I have my grandmother in Balsa. That's all I know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm now a schoolboy at 16. I'm all by myself. Yeah. I've got some money stitched in my coat by my mother, and I leave. I've got a big trunk, which my mother packed for me. And I had a hockey stick. Anyway, I, I was in Goa. I waited till I got had some cup of tea. There were lots of uh, students traveling to um, uh, Belgaum for the exams. I decided I'd go leave when with them. So I booked myself in the second class. But when I went there, they said, well, you can't put that big trunk. You have to put it in the breakwell. OK. All right. I mean, we're doing that in Africa. So, yeah. so I said, fine, you give me a receipt. Yeah. 
and from from uh, Londa, uh, from uh, Barga to uh, Londa, I traveled with these. And then from Londa onwards, I yeah. just went to my cabin. I was in a second class train. As the train was leaving, I saw my my trunk on the platform. Oh God! And all I had with me was a hockey stick, and my uncle had asked for two bottles of wine for his wedding. And a ba bag with two bottles of wine and a hockey stick, and everything was in the trunk. Oh so I saw it, and there was some there was some old men in my compartment. There's no worry, it'll come, it'll come by the next train. So I got to Pune. I went to the station master. Yeah. I said, you know, I, uh, my trunk, I saw that uh, on the platform. He said, well, show me your receipt. He checked, he said, yes, it's not, it hasn't come. But it'll come. I said, well, what, what am I going to do? I, I've got, I don't know anyone. Yeah. Oh, he said, there's no problem. There's, there are hotels there. Yeah. There's a Hindu Dave hotel right opposite the, the train station. You go there. So I went there. And of course, the manager there said, Where, where's your luggage? I told him about it. But every train, yeah. every train would, that would come, I would go and, and meet it. You see? I was there one day, I was there two days, I was there three days. I see. And, and there was a coolie. For the life of me, I don't know how how I used to converse with him, yeah. but he would help me, we would look, no, no, and I, no change of clothes, I used to wash my underwear and all, and, and that's all I had. So one day, uh, there was a chap who came and stood by me and said, hey, you're waiting for somebody? And I said, uh, no, I'm, I'm expecting, I'm, yeah. I told him the story about my trunk. He, he, he said, I'll help you. Yeah. Went to the station bus, still no trunk. You see? So he said to me, he said, Why, how, where do you stay? I said, that hotel. How much you pay? I said, six rupees. Six rupees. A lot of money. Though, six rupees. You come with me, yeah. one rupee a day. Where? A cool. I see. In Pune. I see. Uh, Gonkur, Gonkur. 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 Uh, which village? Uh, uh, which village? I don't know. I don't know which okay. village also, okay. but there were whole. There were waiters and and you know mainly waiters in various re restaurants yeah. and all. Yeah. They be befriended me. They gave me change of clothes. Yeah. Uh, took me to the movie very near Western Hotel in in Pune. And one of them was a waiter in in a Pune milk bar. I'll tell you that also. Yeah. So uh, the. Um, I was fine, but uh, you know, I started worrying because my grandmother yeah. would be wait, uh, worrying. I had written to her to say that I was going to come on so and so yeah. late. So I said to me, She's so waiting for you in Balsar. Balsar. So I said, I, I don't know what to do. So they said, Look, if you want, you give us that receipt. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll check, keep checking, and as soon as it comes, we'll send you a message. I see. You tell me. Uh, I said, fine, you know, so I caught yeah. the train and <laughs> not a long thing, but it was by Bombay. I, some, I asked somebody, I said, I've got uncles in Mayhem. How far is Mayhem? Is it two stops? Now, I'm thinking of two main stops, is it? not suburban stops. Yeah. So then I said, two, and then it's too far because I'm taking a train in the evening to yeah. Balsa. I took the train to Balsa, of course, I get there at 3 o'clock in the morning, and so I slept on the platform until dawn. I knew exactly where my grandparents' house was, because from the house we used to wave to people coming by train. So I walked along the track, and I got there. And when I got there, my grandma said, where were you? This, that, there, come on. We were still running that dairy farm, although it was running down. but. Five o'clock in the morning, there was a lot of activity. Do you mind if we just shift inside my studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just come. for the light? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry. Am I going too long? No, 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 I, not at all. No, it's because I, there is a reason for telling you this. I'll tell you this. There's a very big reason. Is this a fan? I'll take, I'll take a fan. You want the fan off? Yeah.
Unfortunately, our lights are all. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So, 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 uh, um, you come, you know. Uh, what did you have? What, you know? She fussing, after all, she was my grandmother. She was fussing over me. Till, till suddenly she said, said, hey, where's your luggage? So I told her the story. And she said, you mean to say you gave the receipt to an unknown person? How could you do that? So I said, Grandma, I, I, I assessed these fellows. Yeah. They, they looked to be, as far as I'm concerned, they were very honest. They looked after me very well. They didn't know. Uh, in fact, they volunteered. It, it was up to me. Right. They, they didn't uh, insist that I leave the yeah. receipt yeah. with them. Yeah. I, I thought that I should come and see you. Yeah. No, no, go back. So my uncle accompanied me. We went back to Pune. To Pune. We found these chaps. I think it was a receipt. Went back to the yeah. station. That coolie yeah. comes up to us and he says, Is that a pila wala? You know, my trunk was yeah. a little yellowish color, creamish yeah. color. Yeah. It had been there all along. I see. And. Somewhere the station master had made a mistake. Okay. You see, it was there. So I collected it, went back. Years later, I had to go to Pune. Yeah. I was looking for this man. I see. In fact, I still remember his name. It was a Cohen, Albert Mendonca. The guy whom you gave the receipt to? The fellow I gave the receipt to. And he had taken, he from was. Where, from where? I don't know from where. Okay. I, I was not interested in. And even if he told me, it would have yeah, registered. Register. Register. But he, I knew where he worked, yeah. in the Pune milk bar. Soon, soon after, I met the owner of that milk bar, yeah. it's a matris. Uh, another this is a Goans also. also. And I said to him, you know, there was a chap uh, who I would like to go and thank. Yeah. Because they didn't know who I was. I, I, I enjoyed myself in the company of these waiters and all. Yeah. They looked after me very well, you know, and I want to thank him, you know. And he had already, he had a, uh, no, no, he had moved away, okay. and they didn't know where he was. But that made me, ever since then, I did all my, all the entrance, uh, whatever I had to do to get yeah. into St. Xavier's, I did myself. To get into engineering, I did myself. There was nobody to help me. I see. Yes, sir. But why did you uh, opt for Pune? Pune was a good There were only college. two engineering colleges in India. Really? Yeah. Pune and West Bengal? And Rurki. Rurki. The others, like VJT and our the diploma the course. Diploma. So. These were only two recognized really? uh, degree courses. Pune, and was, so competition was quite fierce. I see. But f f luckily for me, uh, you see, Willy Masquerade. Yeah, the he, yeah, he was the principal. W X. W X was also a family friend. I mean, not W X. With W X's sister, she's in the group picture there. Name? Uh, uh, Pinto. Okay. She was Gladys Pinto. Okay. Uh, so, she, through him, through her, she said, "You must meet my brother, yeah. who is W X Masquerade, who I met." You know, yeah. but he was no longer principal of the school, of the engineering school. Yeah. He, yeah. So he had moved, and there was another fellow called Tarapurwara. But what he had done between before leaving, yeah. you see, they found formally the entry into engineering yeah. was based on your inter science and first year science. Yeah. 
parks. And, and they found that the, uh, the high scoring, mark scoring jobs didn't necessarily make good engineers. Okay. So 1,000 marks were reserved for that. Uh, I think it was uh, 600 for inter science, 400 for first year science. They decided to change that. Yeah. And they allotted 2,000 marks. Your entry point had to be a reasonable I mean, inter science total. Right. But thereafter, there was a 1,000 marks. About 100 marks for Boy Scouts or UOTC. I did uh, two years uh, university officers training corps. I joined the uh, uh, yeah. reserve force. Yeah. Uh, so if you were there, you got 100 marks. If you if you uh, uh, had hobbies, uh, did carpentry. But I, I do a lot of uh, hobby work Thank right you. from young. I'll show you some things of it. Uh, 100 marks. Sports, 100 bucks. Boy Scouts, 100 bucks, you see. Um, then there was an entrance exam. English, English, general knowledge, drawing, 300 bucks. Then interview, you know, they were personal interview. So this way they made a 1,000 bucks. And this, during those years, the maximum number of goans and uh, and Parsis got through. Because of extracurricular activities? Because of that. Because, because overall, yeah. and, and all the best engineers, this Arminius father was amongst them, Vittorin Pinto, uh, I can name uh, Eric Saldana. Um, they, we had a huge going crowd I there. See. All these, Bernadine Souza, uh, uh, Rocha, um, uh, who was this? Um, then uh, Willie's brother, um, Orlando. Orlando, and then uh, there was uh, this Baptist de Sousa, Cyril Pinto, uh, then C uh, Cyril Pinto, C.D. Pinto's son, a whole lot of, I mean, uh, I mean big name, big numbers. So they all got in, as I said, because of this. The, and they and all the all those who passed out during those years yeah. have made have done very well because they made very good engineers. They might not have been boffins. Yeah. That's why I said if I, I don't like to I don't talk about my school and college because I was never a top ranker. I mean only yeah. I think in senior Cambridge or, or, or junior Cambridge I did very well or senior Cambridge, um, but. Uh, I never liked history, I never liked French, you know, and that sort of thing. Uh, so I never scored yeah. high marks there. And then you went to the UK? Then when I passed out, yeah. I needed to go to, I wanted some uh, experience. Uh, and I went to the UK. But here again, yeah. I was very lucky. You see, my, a friend of my, my father in Englishman, who was in the colonial audit, yeah. right, had a sister who worked in the uh, leading engineering company. And that, this, is, this is an engineering company, electrical company, that manufactured control gear, automatic for steel wheels, steel mills, uh, cranes, um, paper mills, all, you know, very heavy stuff. And uh, they were thinking of setting up a plant in India. So very fortunately, he said, you know, I'll speak to them. Yeah. He spoke to them and they said, yes, we would like to have one. So I got in there uh, and I, was, I got in as an engineer trainee. Yeah. And while I was there, I thought I might as well do uh, another degree course oh. in, in uh, London University. It was, it was in a different branch of engineering? No, same, oh. mechanical engineering, electrical engineering. I did both, I so, so both. So I've got, I done, done it in Pune and in the UK, but that stood me in very good stead, you see, yeah. because I did a lot of work, yeah. and amongst the work I did there yeah. was for a steel company, yeah. which got me membership of the Association of Iron and Steel Engineers of America. I so when I, 
what was happening was this company who was going to set up a plant here decided not to, because they said at that time, I'm talking the 50s now, uh, they, uh, there was all this talk of India going communist and all Russian thing. So they decided to go slow on that. And they had agents, James Finlay and Company. So now James Finlay and Company were looking for somebody because they were agents for a uh, North British Locomotive Company, uh, dredgers, a whole lot, Scottish cables, um, you name it, track laying equipment. They, they uh, always, the fellow, from the RDSO, number one, when he retired, joined Finlay's in, in Delhi. So all the, the, the uh, collaboration with Chitranjan is with our company. That was our, one of the jobs we did. The track laying, you know, the uh, rails, not, you know, you, formerly the, the rails were not joined. Okay. Now you have long rails, so yeah. you don't have that noise. Yeah. Going ta -ta -ta -ta. So that was done by us. I yeah, I, uh, I brought a fellow out and the plant, the railways. I, that was one of my first projects. Also supplying the first diesel hydraulic locomotives to the government and wow. uh, to the railway. Uh, that, and I was only 26 then. I see. But I, I, but I want to tell you one thing. So uh, what happened was, when I came out, I made all these engineering companies. So the, the company, I, oh, so since these fellows had decided not to set up, they decided to have Finlay's. I was getting restless. I wanted to come back to India. So I went to the MD. I was very popular with the company because I was, I, I made friends with everybody. I was the only Indian in Bedford at that time. I'm talking of the 50s. In the full city? Yeah? In the full city? In uh, that, uh, Bedford. Bedford, the city of Bedford. Yeah, city of Bedford. Only Indian? Yeah? Only Indian? Only Indian. There was an Anglo-Indian girl. I see. And only Indian then. I see. Uh, so the, uh, uh, I, I was also, I was the captain of the company hockey side. And I also played for Bedford Town. I also rode in Bedford Town, but Bedford Town I played, and I even went for the All England Trials. This is hockey or hockey, hockey, hockey. hockey. Uh, rowing was my other other sport, but uh, but I did I only did no competitive rowing in in uh, England, only in Pune. So um, so I. I, they said, look, if you, I went to the managing director and said, look, I want to go back to India. What's happening about this project? Then he told me about this. Yeah. And he said, ah, we, we'd like to have you here, you know, and we're sending you to America for training. And uh, I said, I'd rather to go back to India. I'll tell you why. You see, what happened was there was another senior Englishman sitting next to me in the engineering. And I told him about this, you know. Uh, question of joining Finlay's versus going uh, staying with the company. And he said to me, look, Rasi, go. He says, in England here, you'll go that far and then no further. You know? He says, my advice to you yeah. is go. You'll have more opportunities. You see, here they're all very friendly right. up to a point. Then the lies will come out <laughs> when you try. Which is everywhere, yeah, everywhere. everywhere. But there, particularly, I would be a foreigner, yeah. you know. So at that time, I mean, uh, things have changed. Uh. So uh, I went to Finlay's. Finlay's immediately, uh, with my background and support from the company, said, you're, you're uh, in our book, employed by us. So, uh, and, and so that's how I, I came out to India. I came out to India. It has a long story there, but I won't tell you that now. Uh, so I come, come out to India, and I was, I've been there, I was, I was not number one in the, I'm now only 26. I'm, I'm number two yeah. in my, I'm in that particular uh, yeah. business. Yeah. We, we had, Finland in Bombay had three, four business, main business. One was the uh, textiles, yeah. The second was the import-export 
agencies and all that. The third one was insurance, Lloyd's insurance and shipping, you see. This was number two of the company. I, there was an Englishman who was my supposed to be my boss. Tata's had a problem with their cranes and a, and a problem uh, which I knew the answer for because I'd done work for the steel company in Wales, you know, on that. So the company in England asked me, asked if I could accompany their man to Tata's. And we had an office in Calcutta. So Finlay said, no, 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 Nasi belongs to the Bombay territory. We, uh, we are very different. They said, look, you might be so, but you don't know anything about this subject. We need Nasi. So, and Tatas were very grateful. They laid on a plane, one of these uh, small planes from Calcutta to Jamshedpur. And there was a fellow called Skuka, electrical engineer, who strangely was also one of the <laughs> two Indians who were on this um, uh, Association of Iron and Steel Engineers of America at that time, electrical engineers. So I solved that problem, you know and came back yeah. to Bombay. When I came back to Bombay, my boss, you see, I've been there six months, yeah. and I'm dealing with all these railways and, and, and heavy equipment. No orders. I mean, uh, uh, to get an order, because you, you're talking about... Uh, these yeah, are, it's a few uh, hours far between. You have big orders. Big it's orders. You have to establish it. It takes you... Yeah. This fellow is uh, apologizing to this man who was not, who was actually not senior to, I mean, he was senior in, in years and all that, but he relied on me for all the technical help, you see. So, but they, and he came out as, as, as supposedly chief engineer, but he was actually the chief testing engineer. So they are telling him to teach me how to sell, because we've, I've not got any orders, for, I've been there for six months. So he, he, he said, do you know what Nasi is selling? Yeah. You see? He's not selling tea. So then he goes to the, he goes to the Barasab. Yeah. Barasab has been primed by my boss, you know? Yeah. Saying the same thing, asking him, you know, should uh, he guide me? That fellow said, look, I know what Nasi is doing. Right. And if he doesn't get us an order in, in the next two years, Nobody is going to complain. It'll take more than two years to get an order. True. So, and he said, you know, unfortunately for him, he's, he's joined a tea company. He called them a tea company. Right. And he, he said, really, if you're not happy, I suggest that I take him back to the UK. He did me a very big service. He comes to my room, he said, pack up. You're in a wrong company. These, these fellows don't know what, uh, anything about this subject. You know, you're wasting your time here. You come to the UK, you see. So, uh, so uh, um, what happened was the boss, of course, got this message from here. I, I, I stayed on, of course. I didn't go because they were very good. This Sir John Burns was, uh, although, you know, he was a number one, yeah. look very stern, tucker, pucker, uh, you know, Colonel Blimp. But, but quietly, he was very, very soft. Anyway, a few months later, my boss resigned. He resigned, and the uh, boss calls me. I'm a little over six, 26 years old, eh? and he says, would you like to take charge of this department? I mean, as a senior, I, which, which had entitled me to first class travel, uh, you know, all that, all the perks, uh, uh, car and driver. I had a, a car they were giving me and allowed. Now this entitled me to car, driver, house, all that. So I said, why not? Yeah. I'll take her. He said, think about it. I said, no, I'll, I'll, that's fine, I, I'll, I'll take charge. Yeah. I said, okay, I was in charge. So he calls me a, a couple of weeks later. 
He says to me, he says, um, I say, I would like you to meet F, uh, Ratilal Gandhi. I still remember his name very clearly. Chairman of the Oil Seeds Trading Corporation. So I looked at him and said, Oil Seeds Trading Corporation, me? He looks at me straight in the eye, you know. I could see, it. now or later I could think about his uh, small smile. He looked at me straight. He said, yes, you. So I said, Oil Seed Trading Corporation. He said, I see, aren't you in charge of this department of the import and exports and, uh, you know? I got a cut on. I said, yes, go. Yeah. Now, the company had a company in, uh, Finlay's had a company in England. And they're selling what they call chocolate, chocolate coated peanuts called Payne's Puppets. Very popular in England. Yeah? It's like chocolate coated almonds, but it's peanuts. And they needed a particular type of peanut what they call HPS quality, head pick select quality. And I discovered, as I later discovered with cotton, a highly speculative commodity. You don't, just don't go into the market and say, I want one kilo of peanuts. Okay. I mean, this is, they wanted it in tons, but they wanted it also fresh. And you had to buy it at the right time, at the right price, for the right quality, right. you see? And that, Frederick, I moved from engineering to management. Then I, from then on, I have a lot of management. I mean, took charges of completely new company. I set up new companies, new engineering ventures, new production. I did a lot, but that's a lot. If you look at that list, yeah. like a, one of the first things I did was tags. But uh, as I said, that came in later. Before that. Uh, I, I put on a proposal for uh, automation, this uh, electrical control gear. I got many first licenses, but the company was not prepared to spend more money. They want, that was the sad part, the British companies, their hands were tired, you see, and certainly later, they couldn't operate as 100% British companies. So, so, uh, okay. yeah. 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 no, no, ah, okay. So, uh, so the, uh, the uh, as I said, the control gear, somebody, go, I had talked of a certain type of starter for India, and uh, somebody in England said, oh, but you know, this, those starters, we don't make those anymore. Uh, you know, and, and they put both feet and, and withdrew. Later on, the boss told, told me that. And I said, you, you know, last night in Tubro, at that time, the fellow was in charge of this project, became chairman, UV Rao, who was very friendly with me. I knew all the last night in Tubro, right from Hawk Larson down. But this uh, UV Rao took all my, what I had planned. He asked me for it because, we are not going it, and he set up this manufacture of motor starters. Uh, and I told the fellows in England, I said, I, I, you were questioning how much of, of these I was going to make. Last night in Dubro are making 20 times that. This is the 1950s, and the context is quite complicated because of uh, licensing. Licensing, and plus, uh, India is at a stage where where uh, all this technology is in short supply. Yeah, skills are in short supply, and uh, foreign exchange is in short supply. And Everything was, but you know, also there was another angle here, uh, Frederick. I must tell you one. I dis I I with uh, in contact with a German company to make DAPSEC blowers. Blowers huh? fitting on a knapsack? Knapsack. Oh, for pesticides and all. Right? This company decided to go with me, and I'd got a proposal. I'd submitted to Delhi. Yeah. After some time, I got a message. I knew, you know, those days, I had to go pleading yeah. uh, uh, to the uh, Udyog Bhavan. And, uh, so 
come tomorrow, come next week, come this, that, you know. And you had to pay to find your file, you had to pay for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was terrible. I see. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you I what. Raj in the worst sense of the word. It, it was very bad. Uh, I, I can go on, I will tell you a lot more uh, at another you time. You write a book about that. Yeah, I, and, uh, I can tell you that. But so what happened here, I got a message after, after many months from the company in Germany saying, please, we've just discovered there's an error in the power requirements. You had to, to give what power you required, what, how much water you required. Yeah. Huh? I went to Delhi and I asked, I retrieved the file yeah. and the fellow tells me, oh, sorry, I think your application, uh, we've already licensed another company. I said, oh, there was no other company when I applied. Okay. I said, I can't believe you. Yeah. So I, I, he said, yes, there is. I said, which, which company has got it? Hmm. West in India pre Pressings Company, owned by Billas. And he showed me the file. Okay. And you know what? They, co they copied my I application. See. And in that, I told this fellow, I said, look, yeah. this mistake of this power. I see, it's also here. It's here. <laughs> and he, you know, he just shrugged his shoulders. Okay. That was what was happening. Birlas was sitting there. Lars Trouver was sitting there. I, oh, I mean, uh, this fellow, uh, Tata's, Tata's had their man there. Birlas had their man there. All these fellows had their... As soon as they saw a good project, well, air compressors, I put the first app, suggested it. And I was going to collaborate with a company called New Standard Engineering, a fellow called Patel. He went and talked to a fellow called Nimka, who was the manager of, of uh, consolidated, consolidated pneumatic company, who were representing a British uh, air compressor company. That fellow put him off, said, no, 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 there's no demand, you do, don't get into this. Huh? Put this fellow off, and then he applied it. So to, 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 to kind of wrap this all up, because uh, the technical story is interesting, it's... Uh, I know. i sorry. No, I no, 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 but I just wanted to know the, the, the club that you were involved with. Tell us a bit about that, because that's an interesting part. As Which well. one? The, the clubs, the clubs, oh. like Wellington or London, yeah. Or Madras. Yeah, the, the Bombay, I'm one of the first Indians in the Bombay Jim Okay. I'm the older, at the moment, the oldest, oldest serving member. Uh, I, I joined in along with uh, Rusi Talyar Khan. Um, when they opened it up for non-Europeans, non yeah. I must have been in the second batch or third batch. Uh, this is in 1955. But as of now, because they had a celebration about three years ago yeah. to honor all the, all the members who were members for over 50 years in the club. And when we went there, <laughs> I got a special attention I and uh, as being the oldest, wow. because I was 1955, so you can work it out. Yeah. I, 1955 and it's 2022. Right. So that's what, 67? Wow. I'm still a member, a life member. But, but we had uh, at the strongest hockey side ever. Which year? Uh, this is in the 50s, 54, 55, 56. We used to beat Lusitanians. The Pentangular was there. What was the tournament called? There was this famous Bombay. There was a famous. Pentangular, was a, Pentangular. Uh, sorry? There was a Pentangular. No, 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 no. There was another one uh, with Tatars. Uh, the main ones were Tatars and, and, uh, and this uh, Lusitanians. Right. Uh, people used to say they're losing to you because they want to have the beer in there. And, uh, but we used to beat them. We had a fellow called Satish Malhotra, who married a princess. We had uh, a fellow called Sukhbir Greval, a very close friend of mine, who died recently. He was a son, son of the, uh, one of the Punjab chief ministers. Uh, Sukhbir Greval, yeah. uh, this chap was. Um, these were the, 
uh, we were the Indian lot, but we had two, the, the number one of, of uh, Berbershel, you know who died in that, in the Mont Blanc, I mean in that uh, Plane air crash. crash. Plane yeah. Which killed the Baba also. Who killed Homi uh, He, he was a very good hockey player. And the fellow, fellow who succeeded him was also, was also a Michael, who was also a very good hockey player. So these are uh, two hockey players. And so this club, I, I, I spent, my, my forte there was hockey. Then I got into golf. And I joined the Bombay Presidency Golf Club, of which I'm a life member. And uh, I played a lot of golf. And Madras Club? And Madras, then from, when I moved to Madras, that is a long story, but when I moved to Madras, I joined there. And then, uh, Madras had two golf courses. One was in Giddy, the other one was what they call the Cosmopolitan Golf Course, right. which I, they owe me thanks for help, for preserving it. I'll tell you what about that too. And, and then we had what is called the Addicts Association of South India. Which what association? Addicts. addicts. Golfing addicts. Okay. And so we played all over South India. Yeah. You know? And, and for me, I was, as you know, I, I was very much involved with the Employees Federation. Right. I was its chairman for two years. So I moved around all over South India. Yeah. And played a lot of golf. We had a company uh, holiday home in Uti. We had a textile mill in Metur, Metur Dam, so which was again my, under my charge. So I used to arrange to finish my work on Friday evening. The car would take me to Uti. I play golf on Saturday, Sunday. Take the flight to Coimbatore, back at work. <laughs> so I played a lot of golf. Yeah, and the Madras Club. I was on this committee for 17 years. All the years I was in Madras, um, it was very cosmopolitan uh, and very restricted membership, uh, even today. But at one time, it was very, very difficult to get in there. And like, like the building that, but very, it, it's called the best club in India. They, they call it the ace of clubs. Um, there's a book on it. Um, I served on this committee for 70 years, and two years I was its president. Right. Yeah. Fellows like, people like uh, Titi Krishnamachari's son, Titi Vasu, they came in after me, you know, they, as president right. of the club. Uh, lots of uh, well-known people, uh, Subaya of uh, uh, the Mutaya group. Also, all, I, all of them are, are very, I'm, I'm uncle to the Mutayas. Yes, yes. So the. Um, Thank you so much, uh, Mr. 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 Fernandez, uh, Mr. Yeah. for your for your time and uh, for telling us this interesting story, which uh, brings so many different threads together. Yes, I, unfortunately, sure. I get carried away and probably digress. You no, know. no, no, it's fine. It's perfect. I'm sure it would make a lot of sense to a lot of people who uh, who have been part of this or have been following it or whose parents have been part of it. Uh, it also uh, reminds me of so many things that you know I've heard of, only heard of remotely, and they fall in place and things like that. Because we've read about these things, we've not experienced them. Yeah. Our generation. Thank you so much. For Pleasure. Pleasure.